Hello. Uh, I made the GitLab repo of Flake 8 private. A uh, bunch of real nasty messages have been going around and landing in my inbox. So I wanted to explain what happened, why I did this, and hopefully you'll understand a little bit better and maybe empathize with uh, why I did this. Or not. That's, that's, I mean, you're free to have your opinion. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so in order to talk about this, we have to go all the way back to April of 2021, which is when this migration actually occurred. Uh, I migrated Git, uh, I made, sorry, I migrated Flake 8 from GitLab to GitHub. Uh, there were a couple reasons for doing this. The first was a mysterious branch had shown up inside the Flake 8 repository. I've kept the branch just so, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'll explain why in a second. Uh, a, a crypto miner branch showed up in the uh, GitLab repository for Flake 8, and none of the audit logs included anything that pushed this branch. Uh, so neither myself nor the other maintainers created this branch in the repo. We reached out to GitLab support, and they basically gaslit us into believing that this is both impossible and that we had done it at the same time, despite no audit log showing this, and despite us not granting this individual permission to the robot story. So mysterious crypto miner branch showed up out of nowhere, you know, security alarm bells were going off and uh, support was telling us that it was our fault. And <laughs> which is, there's, there was no way that was true. And so that was one of the big reasons why I wanted to move off of GitLab. There are a few other things. Uh, the UX of GitLab is just kind of bad. Uh, I hate to say it, but like, you know, Microsoft GitHub, they've made a good product and it's, better than GitLab in basically every way from a UX perspective. The other thing is GitLab lacks sufficient moderation tools. Uh, they have some, but they're really easy to circumvent. And we had some abusive users in the Flake 8 GitLab repository that would bypass all of our attempts to use moderation tools, which is not great. Um, I wish I didn't have to do that, but uh, there were some individuals that were <laughs> very much violating boundaries. Uh, so we decided to move from GitHub to GitLab. And I basically did this all in one day. Uh, I created <laughs> thousands of uh, mirror issues so that we didn't lose any of the information from GitLab, uh, copied over as much of the information from pull requests as possible, all the tags, commits, et cetera. Everything was copied over to the GitHub repository. And while I did this, I realized that, oh, if we delete the old repository, uh, this is going to break pre-commit users because pre-commit installs from Git. We'll talk more about that later, why that is, et cetera. Um, but at the time I recognized, okay, this is going to break the stuff. I'm going to make sure that we're going to leave a read-only copy of Flake 8 in place, frozen in time at the time that we migrated the repository, such that we, uh, you know, we don't we don't break those users. And we'll try our best to communicate this migration on as many platforms as possible. Um, so I took to all of the platforms that I have, Twitter, PyPI, changelogs, uh, GitHub issues, pre-commit, uh, the, the pre-commit website, the, all of my pre-commit configurations, like basically everywhere that I could, I tried to announce that, hey, we're moving to GitHub, please change your stuff. Uh, now the old version mostly continued to work. You can see we actually have a snapshot of the repository here. Uh, it's private, which is the change that I did yesterday. Uh, or I guess more specifically, the maintainers of Flake 8 did yesterday. Uh, frozen in time a year ago, such that you know we don't uh, <laughs> we don't update anything, we don't cause any surprising breakages, and we mention uh, you know go go to GitHub. That's where our uh, development is happening here. So this version was 392. That was the last released version uh, of Flake 8 before this migration happens, and it mostly continued to function fine. However, uh, a lot of stuff came along and just, you know, in general, two-year-old software in the Python ecosystem, it's pretty surprising if it continues to work without a hitch. Uh, but a bunch of things happened like Python 3.11, uh, import lib metadata breakages, uh, and just kind of, you know, a, a lot of things. And people made a lot of issues based on this really old version of Flake 8. And, uh, you know, our issue tracker is mostly duplicates of people using old versions of Flake 8 running into issues like this. And, um, you know, the, the fix is <laughs> as simple as upgrading from GitLab to GitHub such that they got a modern version of Flake 8 and wouldn't 
you know, continually make issues on old versions of Flaygate. And people made lots and lots and lots of these, and it was sapping most of the time that I had allocated to work on Flaygate in my personal time. Uh, because I do this for free. I'm not, I'm not paid to work on Flaygate. I do it because I think it's fun most of the time. Uh, sometimes it's not, but uh, this is one of those times where it's not so fun. But that's the way things go. Um, and yeah, I was tired of getting all these issues. Uh, some people even suggested that we move back to GitLab and continue to maintain GitLab and have issue trackers in both places and just like a whole bunch of extra work that I didn't want to deal with. Uh, so I decided to take the old broken mirror private such that uh, we just rip off the Band-Aid and force people to, to move over to GitHub. Uh, so that's that's what I did. Now, what did this break? So this broke pre-commit. If you are using the old repository, uh, it's no longer clonable. If you try and clone gitlab.com slash pycgray slash flag8, you're gonna get an error trying to clone stuff. And that's basically the error here. The fix, again, really easy. Just change these three characters to these three characters. Uh, you don't even have to fix the capitalization here. That's just one nice plus of this. Um, and it'll it'll start working. Uh, now you might ask, why does Prigma make this stupid choice of picking Git as uh, its installation mechanism? And there's a very good reason for this, and the reason for this is pre-commit, despite being written in Python, and despite being the most popular uh, in the Python community, that is where it is most popular, uh, pre-commit's not actually a Python tool. Uh, pre-commit is a multi-language uh, GitHub's framework. It installs tools in all, so all sorts of different programming languages, you know, Python, Node, Rust, Go, Java even. Uh, it has a whole bunch of different programming languages that it supports, and the lowest common denominator for all of these programming languages was naturally a Git repository. Now, Pregament also knows things about uh, each of the package repositories, and it is possible to install things directly from PyPI. Uh, however, Pregament needs a little bit more extra metadata to know like how to run on files, you know, which files it should run on, what types of things. Uh, things that you can't really include in your, you know, PyPI package metadata, uh, or in your npm package data, or really, you know, any package repository. Uh, so it chose. So I chose to put that into a small little YAML file, a little metadata file that includes this information, and then use Git to distribute that. Now I said before, you can of course install directly from the package repos. You then have to copy and paste all of this metadata instead of relying on the uh, battle-tested configurations that are provided by Git repositories. And so that's that's why that happens. Uh, but basically, Pregamit knows how to conventionally install things. It clones repos. It makes isolated environments, think you know virtual environments or the equivalent in Node or Ruby or uh, whatever other programming language you're dealing with. Uh, it makes isolated environments to install these tools. Um, yeah, in a way, Pregamit is kind of a multi-language package manager. But that's why it uses Git, and that's why you know can't really make a redirect here. So unfortunately, it just had to break. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this clears th some things up. Uh, note that if you were using Precommit CI, which is the CI system that I built for Precommit, uh, it will have it would have sent you an auto update PR, uh, which would have changed the Precommit. Uh, or sorry, change the Flakegate repository to GitHub automatically, uh, and you would have received that back in April of 2021. But of course, <laughs> not everyone is using this, so alas. Anyway, uh, hopefully I cleared some stuff up, and I'm sorry, but <laughs> it makes my life better. So uh, anything I can, you know, really do to be able to focus on building better stuff in Flakegate, uh, if I'm not spending all my time dealing with two-year-old versions of Flake 8 and issues that I've already fixed years ago. This makes my life better. Anyway, have a good one.